Good morning and praise the Lord. It's a wonderful day that the Lord has made and we thank God for giving us another opportunity to be able to gather together and to seek his face, call upon his name this early morning. Thank you for tuning in to our morning glory. We are so glad that you're connected and that you are part of this morning glory from whichever part of the world that you are tuned in from. Thank you for joining. And I want to ask you that, you know, would you go ahead and share this stream with a friend, share the link, invite as many people as you can so that we can be able to pray and, you know, seek the face of the Lord together. One thing that we know is that God is faithful and God answers prayer. And as we are going to begin, I'm going to read the book of Psalm chapter 40, Psalm 40, uh, which is a Psalm of David. And David says, um, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and who does not turn to the proud, those who go astray after a lie. Verse 5 says, You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them. Yet they are more than can be told. I don't know about you, but I know that for me this um, is a testimony. And in agreement with David, I have seen the Lord multiplying his wondrous deeds. You know, continuing being with us, providing, um, protecting us even during times when things are getting tough economically. But the Lord has been faithful. He has been faithful in our to us as you know, his sons and daughters. And I know if you look uh, keenly at your life, you will testify that God has indeed been faithful. God has walked with you. God has um, always uh, been with you. And David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. I waited on him. I called upon him. And you know, there are times that the waiting period seems uh, to be taking too long but I'm here to encourage you this morning keep waiting upon the Lord because as you wait upon him Isaiah tells us that those who wait upon the Lord uh, you know shall renew their strength they shall actually mount on wings like eagles they shall uh, run and not be weary and you know they will not be tired they will be strengthened their strength will be renewed day by day and this is the heritage of the people who actually wait upon the lord no matter how things may seem to be tough wait on the lord david says that you know um he inclined my uh, to me and heard my cry and even if you feel like God has not been answering your prayers, God has not been hearing you when you call upon him, I want to assure you that we serve a God who is not like Baal. We serve a God who is not like the other gods of, you know, uh, of men, which are the works of men. Our God is a God who hears prayers and he answers. You remember the contest between um, prophet Elijah and the prophets of Baal, the 450 of them, they called upon their Baal from morning to evening. They made their sacrifices, even go to the place of cutting their own bodies, you know, trying to call upon their God to be able to send fire and to prove that uh, their God is the true God. But at the end of the day, we see that, you know, their God never responded. Baal never responded the same way other gods will never hear us and answer us. But our God God is a God who answers during that contest in Mount Carmel we see that you know um, Elijah calls upon the name of the Lord and God sends fire from heaven praise the Lord Jesus and the psalmist says that he drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the mighty bog other versions say out of the mighty clay and set my feet upon a rock making 
my steps secure and may this be your portion if you have been waiting upon the Lord for a long time you have been crying to him seeking his face I pray that may the Lord take you out of that particular situation that you are in may he grant you grace to be able to overcome every challenge that you may face uh, or and everything that could be standing against you uh, in the mighty name of Jesus and I pray that like the psalmist you will testify that God has put a new song in your mouth, a song of praise to him, so that many will rise and see and put their trust in the Lord when they see what God has done in your life. My praise that God will do a work of heart in your life, a work that will change the way you view things, a work that will change the way you approach issues, a work that will change the way you know um, you respond to challenges of life and to the trials and the temptations that we encounter day after day. And that out of every battle that will arise against your life, God will still be glorified. And God will, you know, uh, show himself faithful. And many will turn to fear the Lord and actually to put their trust in the Lord when they look at your life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, verses 4 says, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, uh, to those who go astray after life. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his um, trust, who's, who actually delights in the Lord, in the law of the Lord, who relies and puts his faith in the Lord, the man who trusts the word of God and never, wa- never wavers, the man who doesn't look up to men uh, for solutions, but the man who put their trust in the Lord, the man who put their hope in the Lord. The Bible says that man is blessed. Then the psalmist testifies and says, You have multiplied, O Lord, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them if they are more than can be told. I want you to take a moment and just praise the Lord for the things, the wondrous things that he has done in your life. Praise the Lord for being faithful. Praise the Lord for saving your life, for redeeming you. Praise the Lord from rescuing you from death. Praise the Lord from rescuing you from, you know, uh, the disasters that have hit, uh, you know, uh, that could have hit you and destroyed you. Praise the Lord for taking you out of the mighty, you know, pit and, you know, setting your feet on higher ground. Praise the Lord, actually for answering your prayers. Praise him for providing for you and your family. Praise him, you know, for being God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Go before the Lord and just praise him. Lord, we praise you and we lift you up this morning. God, indeed, we testify that there are many times that we waited on you. There are many times that we called upon your name. And Father, Lord, you heard us and you answered us from heaven. And Father, Lord, we are grateful for for Lord God everything that you've done for us. We are grateful for being God in our lives. We are grateful for redeeming us. We are grateful for setting us free. Lord, we are grateful that you loved us, God. And Father, Lord God, you have called us your own. We are grateful, Lord, for the strength that you give us day after day, for your mercies which are new each and every day. We are grateful, Lord God of glory, for your grace which is always sufficient. Oh, Father, we are grateful and we say thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Father, Lord God, we are grateful because you've indeed multiplied your wondrous deeds, Lord, and even your thoughts towards us. Even, Lord God of glory, when we thought that nobody, Lord God of glory, was thinking about us, when we thought that the world was turning against us and our, our, our backs were against the walls, Father, Lord God, still you have multiplied your thoughts and your wondrous deeds in our lives. Lord, when we would have given up on our dreams, when we would have given up on life, when we would have given up on so many things, Father, Lord God, you've still been faithful, Father. And we praise you and give you all the glory 
and the honor. Thank you, Jesus, because indeed, Father Lord, we have seen your faithfulness. We've seen you at work in our lives, and we can testify that God of glory, none can compare with you. None can compare with your majesty. Blessed be your name, King of glory. And Father Lord, I pray for each and every one of us who is connected to this this morning. That Father Lord God, as we remember the wondrous deeds and the greatest that you have done in our lives. God, may we be faithful to proclaim of your mighty deeds, your wondrous deeds, God. And the work that you did to rescue us and to save us from our sins and to set us free. God, I pray that you will cause each and every one of us to be living witnesses of what only you can do. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen and amen. As we go on with our prayers this morning, I want to read some two verses here. Mark chapter 11 from verses 24. Mark chapter 11 from verses 24. This is a wonderful promise that Jesus actually gave in Mark 11 from verses 24. The word of God says, let me start from verses um, 23. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe. One of the things that is very important when it comes to prayer is having faith in God, believing God that is able to do that which his word says he will do. And as long as we trust in the Lord and it is within, you know, the perfect will of God, it is what God desires for us, it is what the scriptures talk about, and, you know, it is something that is consistent in scriptures, and, you know, and that God is faithful to answer us when we call upon his name. And in Hebrews chapter 6 from verses 11 to 12, the word of God says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of the hope unto the end, that you will not be slothful, but followers of them when through faith and patience, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Praise the Lord Jesus. Faith and patiently waiting upon the Lord where we started. And in light of these two scriptures which we have read, believing God, to be able to do something. I want us to pray specifically uh, for, for, for restoration this morning. There are many people who have lost many things and they are feeling like, you know, they've been frustrated. They are feeling, you know, there are some things they have lost in their lives. Opportunities they have lost, you know, uh, marriages which are not working, things which are not working. But the word of God says that God is able to do uh, exceedingly abundantly more than we can be able to think or imagine and as we call upon his name and trust upon him I know that he's God who is able to restore praise the Lord Jesus Christ and this morning we will read Jeremiah 30 17 as we pray for the restoration of health the word of God says in Jeremiah 30 17 for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds says the Lord because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom, shall make, um, whom no man shall seek it after. God promises, I will restore health unto thee. This promise, of course, was primarily to the nation of Israel, which um, uh, had sinned against the Lord, and you know, all these distractions were coming upon them. But God is telling them that a time will come when I will restore. As long as you come back and you live in faithful obedience, I will restore uh, your health and I will give, uh, I will heal you of your wounds. I want us to go before the Lord and trust this God that he will heal each and every person who is unwell and they are tuned into this broadcast this morning. We speak healing and we pray and we trust the Lord that God 
will grant them grace and that God will restore their health as they go through medication, as they, you know, um, follow, uh, you know, uh, whatever prescriptions they have been given. God will restore their health and grant them strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, this morning, we trust you to be a God who is able to do, Father, Lord God of glory, what no man can do. And we saw that one of the things that Jesus came to accomplish and did in his earthly ministry uh, was the healing of the sick which was promised. Lord God, we thank you because your word says, by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. And this morning, God, we pray for healing over every God of glory, family member, or somebody is watching this, or our friends who are unwell, wherever they are, our Father and our Lord. We know that, God, there is nothing that is too difficult for you. You are able to heal those who are crippled. You are able to restore, Lord God's eye to those who weren't, uh, who are blessed. Father, you are able even to heal the deaf and the cripples, Lord, and all manner of Lord God diseases that we see in the Bible, and we believe that even in our days, God, you are still able to heal. Therefore, God, we pray that you may touch Lord each and every person, Father Lord, who is unwell, and heal them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We know, God, that you have all the power, and you are able to do this, Lord. Restore health to your people, God, those who are trusting you that you may touch them and heal them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Father we pray believing and trusting amen and amen and amen the book of Matthew chapter 19 from 5 to 6 the word of God says Matthew chapter 19 this is Jesus speaking from verses 5 to 6 and Jesus said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Praise the Lord. This is of course a repeat of uh, what the scripture says, that the two shall become one. Jesus says that whatever God has put together, let no man put asunder. We have so many families that are going to, through crisis. They're going through conflicts and many things which are actually um, becoming an issue. Some people even contemplating divorce. Some people uh, living in marriages where they're not even talking to each other. But we know that it is the will of God that this institution of marriage actually works and it will be stable, that it will be a testimony even of the marriage between uh, the lamb, you know, the, the lamb, the, bri uh, the bride of Christ and Christ himself with the groom. And therefore I want us to pray this morning for marriages in our midst that God will cause our families, our marriages to be strong, to be stable, to be healthy, so that they can reflect the image of Christ um, even uh, to the world and that people can admire and, you know, be able to uh, learn much from uh, our marriages, that people will see the light of God when they look at our marriages, that in our marriages, you know, we shall see children who are loving, the, who love the Lord and who are growing in the, uh, you know, um, wisdom of God being raised up from our families and that our families will influence the world. Pray against any form of attack. Pray that, you know, husbands will love their wives, that wives will be submissive to their husbands and that there will be unity and prosperity in our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God of glory, we thank you because it is your will that God marriages will stand, that marriages will be stable, that marriages, Lord God, will pray present a uh, an image, Lord, of the perfect marriage between uh, Christ and the church who is the bride of Christ. And Father, Lord God, we pray this morning that you will help us, Lord, in our marriages, that, Lord, we will faithfully, God of glory, uh, be a witness even in our marriages. We pray for husbands, Lord, in our midst and in our church, that, God, they will truly love their wives. We pray for God of glory, the wives in our church, that, God, they will truly, Lord, be submissive to their husbands. 
and that God they will be uh, do us of your word for the Lord God of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the marriages that are struggling, that God you will cause them to find peace that comes from you, that you will restore them, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God of glory, you will enable them, Father, Lord God, to be able to, uh, God of glory, uh, live, uh, to be a witness, Father, Lord, of the great things that you keep doing in the mighty name of Jesus. May our marriages lead God of glory, many even to come and encounter Christ as people see us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we pray for those who are hurting. Lord God of glory, as a result of their marital relationships, may you heal their hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Heal their hearts, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God, love will be rekindled in our families, that God of glory, you will enable couples in our midst to be able to tolerate one another and God of glory, to live, Lord God, to honor you, that they will forgive one another, stand with each other, God, and be able, Father, Lord God of glory, to set an example in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. Still, uh, we have prayed for the marriage. I want us to pray now for the general family. We pray, uh, the word of God says in Acts chapter 16 from verse 13, and they said, the apostles speaking, believe on the Lord Christ Jesus and you shall be saved together with your families or your house. And today I want us to pray for our families. We could be having members of our families who are not born again, either the nuclear family or the extended family. The best thing that can ever happen to any family is each and every member of the family getting to know the Lord and living and walking in the ways of the Lord from their early years. The children, the parents, how beautiful it is when um, the children love the Lord and they're, you know, growing in their knowledge of God. They're growing into Christ-likeness day by day, pursuing God, putting to death the desires of the flesh. How beautiful will it be when, you know, the parents are doing the same and even when the extended family members are doing the same. I want us to go and pray for our families, that God will restore our families, that God will bring the hearts of our families together, that God will save our families from the power of sin and the penalty of sin, that God will actually grant our families to be full of grace. As families, we will um, be forgiving. We will love one another. The parents will love the children. The children will obey the parents. And, you know, there will be harmony and peace in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, Lord God, we know that it is your desire that, Lord God, all the people will come to know you. All the people will come to believe in you who saves and sets free. And this morning, Jesus, we pray specifically for our families that, God of glory, you may rescue, Lord, those members of our families who are still living in sin in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, everlasting God, that, Father, Lord God, you may do something new, Father, Lord, in our homes and in our families. We pray for restoration, God of glory, of those who are not walking in your ways in Jesus' mighty name. That, Father, you may remember them this morning and that you may draw them to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray that, God of glory, you will remember masses and that, Father, Lord, God, you will be at work in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, everlasting God, that, God of glory, you may restore them in the mighty name of Jesus and help each and every member of our families, both nuclear families and extended families, to encounter you and to grow Father, Lord, in the knowledge of you, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for peace, Lord, and unity in our families. We pray that you will cause the members of our families, Father, Lord, God, to be able to live out, Father, Lord, God of glory, their Christian faith in Jesus' mighty name. That, Lord, parents will love their children, that children will obey their parents, and that there will be unity and harmony in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, because you are able to do this. We thank you for the peace that is coming upon our homes, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. 
we go on, I want us to pray that God will actually be at work even in the areas of calling that he has called us. I know we are called to different things. Some of us are in the marketplace, you are in the business. Some of us are in ministry and all of us are full-time ministers, uh, whether you are in the marketplace or serving, you know, uh, uh, in, in, directly in ministry. But all of us are ministers. We pray that God will actually make his grace abound as we do whatever he has called us to do. As we serve in church, as we serve in the marketplace, in the business world, in the places we have been employed, pray that God will actually be at work and that God will enable you to be salt and light, that his grace will be sufficient and that you'll be able to stand even when the seasons of testing come and you'll be able to do that which he has called you to do in whichever place that God has placed you in. Father, Lord God, this morning we pray for restoration of zeal. Lord God of glory, for those of us who are faint-hearted at this moment, and I pray that God, as we serve your purposes, Lord God, in different spheres of influence, some, Lord, in, uh, in business, some, Lord God, in the places they have been employed, in their companies, their institutions, Lord God, their organizations, in whichever place they are, my Father and my Lord, I pray that may your grace abound. There are times that we face challenges in the marketplace. I I pray that God of glory, these will be opportunities for us to be faithful witnesses and that God of glory, we will be able to stand for the truth and Lord God of glory, represent you, Father Lord, call us true believers in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray that you may bless the work of our hands and that God, as we engage in whichever thing that you have called us to, Lord, may we be found faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, mighty Redeemer. Blessed be your name, Jehovah. I pray that God, you may be at work in our lives. Lord, as we step out, as we go to work today, Father, be with us and grant us, Lord God, good success that comes from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen and amen and we are going to end at that point for today and i want to encourage you to continue seeking the face of the lord in prayer and waiting upon the lord patiently god is faithful and god answers prayer our giving details are on the screen and i want to invite you to give your tithe your offering or any other form of commitment and the lord will bless you as you do that this morning we are going to pray even as we bring this to an end father lord we thank you because we know that you are with us. Thank you for blessing us, Lord God of glory, with life. Blessing us, Lord, with your mercies, Lord God, and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your favor upon our lives. Thank you for blessing the work of our hands. I pray, Lord, for each and every person who has given this morning, that you may bless the work of their hands, Lord God. As they go out and as they come in, may they be blessed. I pray that God, you will surround them, Lord God of glory, uh, with them. Um, Lord God of glory, your favor, and that you will enable them to excel in whatever they are doing to the honor and glory of your name. Father, Lord God of glory, I pray that you may be with us today and every other single day, and that God of glory, you will multiply our seed for sowing and our bread for food. Lord, in accordance to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you do pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow in church during our Wednesday service from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And of course, on uh, Sunday, we have our two services from uh, 7.30 a.m. and the second service from 9.30 a.m. We are located along General Matenge Road, opposite Aga Khan Hospital, just uh, before you get to Mamangina Girls High School in Kizingo area. Please come join us. Let's fellowship together. Let's grow together. Uh, in this journey of faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. May he bless your coming in and your going out. May he bless your bread and your water. May his favor be upon you now and forevermore. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.